100 doses of COVID-19 vaccine were administered today to health care workers at UF Health Jacksonville. But with a new vaccine comes a lot of questions and unfortunately misinformation. So Lauren Verno and our News for Jack's Trust Index team is hard at work to help separate fact and fiction. So Lauren, what did you find out? Tara Joy, so what we know right now, this is the post that is circulating around social media. It's a tweet that says these are three of the four volunteers who developed Bell's palsy after being vac vaccinated with the Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. So that's where we started with our trust index. This is something that's popular going around social media now, particularly amongst the anti-vaccination crowd. UF Health Jacksonville Director of Infectious Disease Chad Nielsen says misleading posts like this one are very common and reminds everyone not everything you read on social media is true. There's no evidence of that for this vaccine yet. Um, certainly when Pfizer released their clinical trial information, uh, the adverse events were reported. There was nothing serious. Uh, I'll go on and say there were deaths in the clinical trial, none of which were due to the vaccine. To be clear, four participants in the Pfizer vaccine trial and four participants in Moderna's trial did experience Bell's palsy, which in its simplest form causes the face to droop. In Pfizer's trial, all four participants who experienced Bell's palsy received the COVID vaccine. However, in Moderna's trial, three participants who experienced Bell's palsy got the vaccine, one got the placebo. Dr. Elizabeth Ransom with Baptist Health says that should not deter anyone from getting the vaccine. Just like there were some cases of appendicitis um, in, in study participants, both on the placebo arm and, and in the uh, vaccine arm. A nurse is vaccinated, but just minutes later, this happens. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Tiffany Dover fainted as she spoke to reporters at a hospital in Chattanooga, Tennessee. But it turns out it wasn't a reaction to the vaccine. Tiffany has a medical condition and faints often. She quickly recovered and spoke to reporters. I have passed out probably six times in the past six weeks. You know, I, it's common for me. It's very common. People should not use that as a barometer for not taking the COVID-19 vaccine or other vaccines. No such mishaps in Washington as Vice President Mike Pence was vaccinated. But watch as the hand of medical technician Sean Way Dean. Tonight, in a spacious suite, everyone feels welcome. Tomorrow, the welcomes keep on coming. Back for another shift um, at work. Dr. Evelina Graver documented parts of her day for us. She calls these days heart wrenching. 12 to 16 hours inside a COVID 19 unit at North Shore University Hospital. Every one of her patients seriously ill and on a ventilator. You walk in and it's, it's hard for me to say, but you can actually smell fear. You smell death. I definitely feel a lot more confident in what we have to offer regarding patients when they actually come in into the hospital. Whereas about a year ago, and we were at a complete loss regarding what needs to get done, how do we do it, how do we protect ourselves, how do we protect the patients. So we have a certain processes that we did not have a year ago. Now I'm about to walk into the unit. Be safe, everyone. I experienced COVID in, in all different uh, of its facets as a physician, now as a patient, also as a loved one who lost a loved one to COVID when my grandfather passed away almost a, a year ago in April. So I've seen it, I've seen it from all sides <laughs> and it sucks. I took care of the sickest of the sick patients when I actually ran the COVID units last March, April, May, and June. There was in the back of an ambulance truck with my own grandfather, who also got sick of the COVID at that period of time. And I didn't get sick at that time. I subsequently got fully vaccinated beginning of January. And then in the beginning of February, I got sick. My symptoms were very unusual because the only thing that I really felt was fatigue. And at a certain point, my fatigue went from, oh my God, I'm tired, to, oh my God, I can't really move. You want to be able to put your life on the line and protect, but at the same time, knowing that what you could be doing inside, you're bringing home with you and can infect your loved ones. Get your five on. It's Cinco de Mayo at Renaissance Center. And that means Cinco Dollars pays your first week off. So I saw a lot of people die that I feel like shouldn't have died. 
Y'all, that assignment there broke me. Uh, I was put in what's called a pit. And in this pit was eight patients, all COVID positive. My first day of orientation, I was told that whatever patients go into the pit, they only come out in a body bag. I'm used to when we run codes, we do everything we can. We exhaust all measures to save our patients. Anybody that know anything about CPR, one round is two minutes of CPR, which normally includes chest compression and um, bagging them. The patients that we coded, we were not allowed to bag them because we would get too much exposure, which I hadn't seen. Um, and because they were COVID positive, this hospital's policy was they only get three rounds of CPR, which is only six minutes. There's out of all the codes that we had there, there's not a single patient that made it. Had one patient that was called the VIP patient. She was a doctor's wife. And when I say they pulled out all the stops for that woman, it wasn't nothing that they didn't do for that woman. And guess what? She was the one patient that made it out of that ICU alive and was able to downgrade to a long-term acute care. There was two nights particularly in the hospital when I honestly didn't know whether I would make it or not. I was under incredible pressure. Got trips up and, and all that they needed to do. But I remember those nights particularly really crying out to the Lord and, and asking him to help me and asking him to even supernaturally just do something that would encourage me and bring me through and remember the next day I had a night from hell <laughs> and you got to understand this in, in the isolation ward when no one else can get in when no one else no pastor no friend no family members when no one else was allowed in, God sent a cleaner. Now we have a lot of nurses and doctors as on the front lines, you know, fighting the coronavirus. And you have a nurse that's from Nevada. Her name is Nicole Serotech. Now she went to New York to assist, you know, the nurses and doctors there with this pandemic. But there have been a lot of stories coming out of New York about medical negligence and mistreatment. And she noticed, Nurse Nicole noticed that she went to a, a hospital where they served a lot of, you know, people who were non-white, so it could be black, Puerto Rican, um, etc. right in New York. And she noticed how bad the people were being treated. She talked about how they're literally just killing people because of medical negligence. And I want to play a, a clip of this, what this nurse is saying, because this is, has been going on. Nobody's been paying attention to anything. Nobody cares. And this is why a lot of black people are always, you know, very cautious when it comes to the medical industry. Let's go ahead and roll that short clip. On. Oh, great goodness. It is 
8.42 New York time, and I got to my regular unit, and they took my patient away, my black guy. And now I'm getting switched units. This is exactly what happened before at the other hospital. As soon as I told somebody, and like, like management and tried to advocate for my patient, they take the patient away from me and then they move me. <sighs> so like I legitimately don't even know what to do anymore. Like even the advocacy groups don't give a shit about these people. Like literally, like black lives don't matter here. And I mean, that's pretty sad that somebody who is white and lives hundreds of miles away from the city gives more of a shit about these people than the actual people in this city, like, for real. Like, I had a complete breakdown yesterday because, you know, I missed an important email to do a revision on my proposal, so my proposal got canceled because I was trying to advocate for my patient and talk to management here and get the care that he needs because he's being medically mismanaged. Um, and I just had a complete fucking breakdown because, you know what, my entire proposal got canceled because I, you know, wasted my time advocating for a fucking patient who's just going to die anyway. <sighs> you know, and sure enough, they take the patient away from me. And then almost two hours into the shift, they switch me units. This is exactly what happened at the other hospital when I was advocating for the little Hispanic lady. You know, guys, here's the thing. Let me try and put things into context for you, okay? I know not everybody's going to live. I'm not that fucking green or ignorant or, you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to think that, okay? I know we're going to have a shit ton of people die. But these people aren't dying from COVID. Let me give you several examples here. 